Hi, Caleb with Brownells here. Today we have a little bit of a different video, um, and today's video is an addendum to the Smith Busters that we did on firing um, 5.56 out of a 2.23. So the reason we're doing this addendum is because Sammy actually reached out to us and recommended that we actually add a few things to it. And to understand the importance of that and why we're actually taking the step to do this, um, you have to understand who Sammy is. So in previous videos we've done in the past, we've mentioned Sammy, even though we haven't gone into detail of who they actually are. So Sammy is the Sporting Arms and Ammunition Manufacturers Institute. And you can go to their website, sammy.org, to see like in full detail who exactly they are and get the in-depth description that defines you know what organizations they're made of and things like that. But basically, they set the standards for ammunition and firearms that are manufactured commercially um, here in the United States. So that's why that's important. So with that being said, Sammy contacted us, passed on some great information. I took plenty of notes here. Uh, we actually jumped into a conference call, had some really had a really good meeting with them, and we definitely thought that this information was worth passing on to you. So here we are. And the first thing um, is going to be markings on the firearm. So the first thing Sammy recommended, and of course this one may seem kind of obvious, and we've covered this in the past, but it's a good thing to reinforce here in this video, is to match ammunition to the markings on your firearm. Now the reason I thought we should bring this up in this video is because we talked about the AR-15 specifically, and the AR-15, a lot of receivers are marked or can be marked different from the actual barrel. Um, like you'll see some receivers marked multi or... Uh, 223, 556, or uh, 300 blackouts, or 9 mil, or just different things like that. But on the AR-15, it's important to remember to match the ammunition marked to the barrel and not the receiver. So that's an important thing, and the first thing we'll cover here uh, to remember. So um, keep that in mind, starting going in. So next up, let's talk about chambers, because one of the big things, you know, in shooting 223 and or 556 and 223 chambers, um, or not doing it, I should say, is going to come down to the actual chamber itself. Now, especially since there's a lot of custom rifles and custom cut chambers out there, um, if you have a chamber that's cut tighter than Sammy spec, then the proof of that chamber, or that the proof that that barrel may have been tested at, or potentially um, manufactured, similar manufactured barrels were tested at, doesn't mean a thing because that chamber isn't a chamber cut within Sammy spec. So a tighter than Sammy spec 223 chamber is definitely not okay to shoot any form of 556 in and it's probably not okay to shoot a lot of 223 in because that chamber was cut for a specific cartridge. And you can see that with a lot of these gunsmith specific cut chambers out there. So that's something to be careful of with not just this particular scenario, but any custom gunsmith rifle out there. Now, moving on to the actual 5.56 ammunition, because 5.56 is a um, NATO round, so it's a STANAG round, so what that means is a standard agreement round, so that's um, a standard that NATO uses, and that standard agreement isn't just ammunition specific, you may see that term used with their magazines and different things like that as well. It's basically a umbrella term that uh, means it has to be within a certain spec so that it works in all of these different firearms. So because of that, these tolerances and pressures and things like that are going to be somewhat loose um, so that they work in these wide variety of things. So whenever you go to transferring that to your 223 chamber, you may have something that works great. You may have something that works not at all. So that's something to be very mindful of as well. So M855 is not always necessarily M855, if that makes sense, depending on where you get it from. So M855 is a 5.56 round. 993 or an M855A1, those are also 5.56 rounds or 5.56 by 45 rounds. But all of those rounds have vastly different pressures. So that's something to be extremely mindful of as well. So something else here that's important to remember is that whenever you're dealing with 5.56 ammunition, specifically the 5.56 by 45 NATO ammunition, so your, your most common, which is your M855, um, which is your standard green tip that we all know here, and then you have your, you know, your M193, um, 
and you have, let's say, your M855A1s, your M993s. There's a lot of different varieties of 556 out there. And then you have your 223, you know, let's say your standard hunting cartridge, which isn't a NATO round, whereas all the other ones are NATO rounds. Now, all of those NATO rounds have a much higher pressure than that one 223 round. So that's something that's very important and something that's uh, you need to be mindful of whenever you're dealing with all of this as well. So whenever these ammunitions are pressure tested and different things like that, so your NATO rounds and your, all, well, basically all of your military rounds versus your commercial civilian rounds, those pressures are tested differently. They have different standards for pressure testing. So they're not really comparable whenever you get into comparing the actual chamber pressures of these two rounds because they weren't, used, they weren't tested using the same techniques. Next, let's talk about the actual techniques that's used to measure these pressures. So all of your military cartridges and all of your commercial cartridges have two different techniques that are actually used to measure those chamber pressures. So you can't com really compare one to the other one to one. So saying that, you know, this one operates at this pressure versus this pressure, and one's a civilian round and one's a military round, that's comparing apples to oranges because they they don't even operate off the same measure, the same unit of measurement. Uh, so it's no comparison between the two. So you really gotta be mindful and really know what you're talking about whenever you're actually comparing chamber pressures. Another thing I want to talk about here, and based on the comments of the, the actual Smithbuster video, uh, we talked about wear, uh, wear on the firearm, increased wear on the firearm. And based off of you know, going back and reading those comments, it's clear that a lot of people thought we were talking about chamber, or barrel wear in general. And we weren't talking about barrel wear. We were actually talking about wear on the rest of the firearm, bolt lugs and different areas like that, and increased wear in those areas because of that increased bolt thrust and that, that actual increase in chamber pressure. So although you may see an increase in wear on the barrel, it's not really notable. All the notable increase in wear is on your firearm. So that's another area that you need to determine if it's actually worth it. If you actually determine it's safe to fire in your firearm, if it's worth it with that increased wear because you will have an increased bolt velocity, you will have increased wear on your bolt lugs, um, your springs are gonna have to be changed more frequently and different things like that. So that's something else to be mindful of as well. So when it comes to actually like piercing primers because of high pressure and different things like that, you know, if you're piercing primers or you're blowing primers and primers are coming back into your action, I've seen this on AR-15s quite a bit, um, unfortunately, and Anytime you lose a primer or you're leaving any part of ammunition in your firearm, like a primer, you know, a piece of the rim, anything like that, SAMI classifies that as an ammunition failure. So that's a no-go in their book. So anytime that's happening, that's a notification that you should definitely be switching ammunition and not using that ammunition in your firearm. So you know, uh, pierced primers, blown primers, uh, gas leaks, anything like that is an, a definite sign of increased pressure or overpressure in your firearm. So with all of that being said, let's get into kind of the closing here and mention if you have any questions about any of this, you can contact Sammy at sammy.org. They have a wealth of informa information on their website about all of this stuff. And of course, you can contact us here at Brownells. And if you have any questions about your firearm specifically, of course, contact your firearm or ammunition manufacturer. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.